Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. You know, as you look at backup architectures, one of the things they have to do is scale. The challenge is they can be kind of brittle at times, so bringing flexibility into that architecture is a really important thing to look for as you're looking at different solutions on the market. Uh, joining me to discuss this is Roger Stein. He's with Veritas. Roger, thanks for joining us today. It's great to be here, George. So uh, talk a little bit about what you guys are doing to kind of address this uh, flexibility uh, need. Okay, so we went out and started, started talking to our customers. A lot of them use appliances, and, you know, what should we do next? They really like our appliances. One of the main pain points they started talking about was data protection sprawl. Okay. And it was basically, they started getting a lot of data protection environments spread around their company, and it was for several reasons. One is different departments would need to have their own special needs. They wanted to control their own destiny. They wanted to control their own data protection, so they would set up a separate environment. Okay. Uh, they would get a new business unit that started. Same thing. They would have separate, uh, unique requirements. They needed to set up a, a unique data protection environment. And, and because of the, the success of the appliances, it was just easy just to drop another appliance in. It's almost... Yeah, you know, easy, yeah. easy enough to drop another appliance in. Some of them would go to get an outs a different solution altogether. So, oh, yeah. so they started getting this big heterogeneous de uh, oh, de set point. of yeah. deployments also, which was actually complicating their whole, um, their whole infrastructure. Uh, one of the things that was driving that, again, as I mentioned, was the need to uh, meet the changing business environment. Okay. Uh, um, so they needed the agility to uh, adapt to the environment as it... Uh, as it changed. Right. And actually that was feeding back on creating more sprawl because you had to act fast, okay, I'll just get another data right. yeah. the That's environment right. and, and add it in there. To some extent you're guilty by making it too easy, right? Yeah, you're yeah. making it too easy. It's too easy to start up something else. Right. Another thing is they needed to reduce costs. Um, so that was a pain point. One, the sprawl is, is, is increasing costs because you're taking up a lot of rack space, which sure. is a, really one of the most valuable uh, depart. Um, which is one of the most um, valuable real estates in, in the company. Sure. Another thing they were doing to reduce cost is moving to the cloud. It's right, easy. Right. And that have, that's very agile, too. You just, you know, you pull out your credit card, you create a deployment, you're, sure. you're done. So you, so you got this whole sprawl of, um, of data protection environments around the company. So we went back and thought about, well, how can we address these, these three issues of sprawl? They still needed agility. They needed to reduce the cost. So we went back and thought about how we could actually address these uh, three issues. And uh, we thought, what if we put um, all these different environments, these data protection environments, in one machine? We thought we could do that with uh, containers. If we could put net backup in containers, uh, it, the benefits of containers are they're very easy to deploy. They're very quick to deploy. You could rapidly deploy them. Uh, they're very flexible. You can create different configurations and solutions with all the microservices in, in mm -hmm. each container. And then they're isolated, which is an important feature. They, sure. they protect, they, they keep each different application isolated. Uh, so that's what we did with the Flex Appliance. We, we built an appliance. We took one of just, we built an appliance the, in which you could, I would have to draw around that. <laughs> And this is Flex. Uh, with, a con with a software layer that contains net backup and containers, or different components okay. of net backup. So this containers. is one physical piece of hardware, and then net backup is running in multiple container instances inside the... Yes. Yeah. Okay. And basically, we, had, we created a menu of net backup components uh, in containers. Yeah. Okay. And basically, what a, a customer can do is they say they needed to create a, a new configuration for finance. They pick out the, 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 uh, the net backup uh, components in these containers or microservices, these backup services. Sure. They configure it exactly the way finance oh, okay. needs. Uh, same thing with engineering and, and same thing with the business units. We even have a, a container um, service called uh, for cloud catalysts. It's our, our gateway to the cloud. Okay. So now they can configuration, configurate um, an environment that connects to the cloud or multiple clouds using this microservice container. And, and so you do, do you just select the services that you need in that particular instance? Is that yes, how that yes. Works? It's, okay. just like a, it's just like a menu. You can order, use as many of them as you need as, and huh. you can configure them in, in, in the best way 
uh, to the requirements of each of these. Um, so I would assume that would be more efficient also in utilizing CPUs and all that sort of stuff too, right? Yes, yes. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a more efficient way of using your infrastructure. Sure. So that's so one of the big benefits we found from this at first is that now they can consolidate all those different hardware components into this one machine. Right. And so that's starting to take care of the sprawl right there. So you're... Um, so, so the sprawl, so you, you go to consolidation. So you consolidate the sprawl. For, and then that just contributes to reducing costs. Sure. Because now you're taking, uh, we've had examples of customers that could reduce uh, five rack spaces, racks of equipment down to uh, less than one rack using, wow. using the Flex Appliance. Okay, great. Um, and that also simplifies your management. It's very easy to manage because now you're just managing from one machine versus sure. these machines all over the uh, all over the company. Right. Another big benefit to the, the Flex is the, the containerized solutions. As I mentioned, they're very easy and rapid to deploy. Mm -hmm. So now you can if a new, you can you could if a new somebody comes to you and wants another service or another environment, we can you can configure that in minutes. Yeah, just spin it up. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, 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 by just configuring these different services in, into a into a solution. I think that's an important differentiator too, because you know just thinking about you know sometimes you got to think about what we're so saying here. If you go to buy another appliance, what that typically means is I got to make room in a rack somewhere because everybody data center is jam packed, and I got to move stuff around. I got to recable. That's a chance for human error as opposed to just starting another service. That's just a yeah, and day it's difference. all done in software. You, yeah. you know you don't have to bring it in, rack it up, whatever. Yeah. So that contributes to agility. Yep. So now you, you have a very agile environment. So before, what would take several days to do, uh, you can do it in several minutes, yep, which absolutely. really really speeds things up. And again, this reduces cost. Obviously, consolidating all that rack space it saves a lot of cost, but it also saves in management cost. It saves uh, you know just at the time to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, the other real benefit to this is these, because as I mentioned earlier, the containers are isolated. Mm -hmm. So each of these still, to the end users, look like an isolated application. So to engineering, it looks just like they were before when they had sure. their own hardware infrastructure. Right. Uh, but they just have all this flexibility that's running in this, in this one machine. Wow, okay. So, so um, when is the, the Flex Appliance going to be available? It's available today. It's, oh, well, it's, there you it's, go. Been, it's been out for about a year. Okay. And uh, it's really gaining a lot of traction as people realize the capabilities that, that it brings and the ease of use. So, so I think the uh, one of the things I see here is it would seem to me that your time to get that first backup done uh, just really went went down tremendously, right? Yeah, no, we've we've had we can set up a new backup infrastructure in in, in five minutes, mm -hmm. just you know, uh, using software. So to that first backup is is, is very very quick. And I would also think that this type of approach has some advantages over some of the hyper-converged uh, sort of data protection infrastructures that we see come into market uh, because you're eliminating, uh, you know, the, they have the same problem because you're still adding physical hardware and you still have the, that same data center floor space issue, right? Well, yeah, so ba basically uh, hyper-converged is very granular. You have to add a, a new set of computing right. and memory at the same time. With this architecture, you can optimize that. Right. Because uh, you can devote the amount of CPU space you need in the storage because you, you allocate the storage to each container. And, you know, the, the Flex Appliance can grow up to two petabytes. Wow. So it can be very big, but it, you don't have to start out that way. You can start out smaller and add storage as you need. Huh. You know? And then I, I guess one final thing uh, is how does this work as far as upgrades and things like that go? Because one thing we know about the backup infrastructure is it will change. So how do, how do upgrades work? So upgrades are very easy because say you get a new, we have a new release of net backup. You just download a new a new net backup container, okay. and you have the, the release right there. You just start connecting your uh, your environments uh, to that uh, to that new release. The other real benefit too is you don't have to upgrade all these environments at the same you stole time. Stole my thunder. I was going to just yeah. say that. Yeah. Yeah, because you can continue to run the old releases until each department is ready to to make the change, which really makes. Um, uh, upgrading and much, much faster and easier. Yeah, because you're always going to want to test that new release, make sure everything's working correctly it. and all that kind of stuff, and, right? And uh, you just do it with the container. If, if you have a problem, you go back to the older container and, and you can just 
debug it that way. That makes a lot of sense. Well, thanks for joining us today, Ryan. Okay, great. It's been great to be here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So there you have it. If you're looking to really build in uh, flexibility, uh, reduce uh, data protection sprawl within the uh, enterprise, and also drive down costs because it's something we always have to be concerned with, this container type of architecture is really something to look at as opposed to some of the other architectures that are on the market. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.